And we are back. Bienvenue, Ohio gozaimos. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, hang, I'm hang buttons. Uh, it's all right. You, uh, we're going to do a thing with this thing. Yes. And apparently I can you know, screw up the audio if I just do this. Yes. Th- that was my foot tapping something. Anyway. Cool. So I don't think we have a choice. Oh, how about the th- ruse of the ooze? Should we go simple? Uh, No. Okay. All right. No, no. Our, our fans deserve to watch us get our asses kicked. That's true. Yeah. You, but I want, I want that feeling of accomplishment of like no, the moral don't. feeling of not sucking. No, you don't get that here. Mm. You don't deserve that. <laughs> so, but suffice it to say, on Monday, and I oh, I, do we I, gave up on the other level? Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, suffice yeah. it to say, I saw someone from a classic '90s film, literally in his underwear, and nothing else on Monday. God damn it! And I wish I could really say more than that. Um, ah, de- wow, well, you're deader. I am. Well, I am the deads. Uh. Actually, yeah. I guess we both have stuff we can talk. Can't oh, yeah. Talk I know. Well, you've seen some shit. Uh, well, let, let, let's just say my boss has been talking about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Your boss has been in the news lately. Oh, yeah. And, that, and that's probably the most I can get into it. Yeah, I know. Um, well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. Yes. Yeah, someone from a, How do I get out of so, this? Someone from a classic 90s film, and he was wearing... Oh, God damn it. You know, nothing but underwear and a smile the other day. Because this is how I spend my life. Uh, you know what? In in my life, that's just not weird enough to me. Mm. Seriously, well, I, I for, the, for the first seven years of my time in the anime world, I mm-hmm. was doing burlesque shows. Well, um, oh, I, actually, you know, since, since it's funny, because at this point, it's been almost ten years since I joined the industry, and the, one of the first things that I did, and the reason I did it, is because I had the opportunity to work with ah shit, you know, uh, tro- God damn it, trauma god Lloyd Kaufman. You know, uh-huh. The first time, you know, it was, it was believe it or not, ta da! All right, good. Now I can talk. It was through an ad on Craigslist, and it was a it was a promo for a shall we say well known animal rights group. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> how you? Oh, I, I oh had yeah, a batch. I, I died early. Duh. I die early and often. And had the opportunity to work with Lloyd Kaufman, who's a sweetheart of a guy, president of Troma, Toxic Avenger. Uh, kind of gave like James Gunn and a shit ton of other people their start. And it ended up with me and about a dozen other people in our underwear in under 40 degree temperatures in Queens and cuddled together in a tiny little space to, to show the difficulties of what it's like being a caged animal. <laughs> and they left us in there for eight fucking hours. And it was just unbelievably brutal because we're, we're sitting there. It's like I said, it's in Queens. You know, the air quality is terrible because we're at the basement of a ceramic warehouse and that shit. And we're sitting there cuddled up. I'm cuddled up next to a 300 pound fully naked man to stay warm. Oh, yeah, this should... is how, this is how I started my career. Well, ah, yeah, there's no way to. You sure you don't want to? You sure you don't want to do simple? No, I hate no, you right now. It's, it's, our fans are not getting simple. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, like I said, I mean, Lloyd Kaufman has been a sweetheart of a guy. He couldn't come to the wedding, but he sent us a really nice card and everything. And we've stayed in touch with him regularly. I send him, you know, send him usually a birthday text every every. Oh, you know, crap. Uh, days. You're down to one hit point. Or, you're. Nope. I'm down to dead. That's where I'm at. Hadogan. Oh, you had a Hadogan? Yes. Ooh, wow. That. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just right <laughs> in his face. <laughs> like I know I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna go for it. <clears throat> I've already done one of the episodes called Dying Early and Often, so I can't really use that episode name again. Uh, that's <clears throat> part two. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. We'll, we'll just get to a part 66 I don't know, at I'm, some point. There's no way. There's All no right, th- way you we, could I, dodge that. I think we have to time this better. All right, and stay back. <clears throat> God, you piece of crap. I know. Hey, you wanted to play this, dude. Well, this the sad <clears throat> news. Ah, but, and I'm dead. But Uncle Lloyd, when we had the podcast, was on there. Yes. And what did, what did, I, I pissed him off. Well, I didn't did piss you, him off. Did you piss him off? I didn't piss him off, but he, I said something <clears throat> incorrect, and he very quickly uh, corrected me. <laughs> also, he called me Jeremy for the entire interview. It's okay. He called me. <laughs> when I reconnected with him, uh, I guess it's like three or four years after that, because uh, there was a movie I line produced and had a small role in called Bloody Slumber Party. It was a horror mm-hmm. film, Brian O'Halloran from 
Clerks was in it, Joey D'Onofrio, and I had to pick him up from his apartment. And the entire time, he kept calling me Charles. Okay. <laughs> so I get it. So you're Jeremy, I'm Charles. But you know what? Spite that, I mean, the man has so many people, you know, every day he comes across. But he's a sweetheart of a guy. Absolutely one of the nicest people on the planet. Well, he's not paying him, so he's got to yeah. give him something good. <laughs> I think, well, for, yeah, for the, uh, not PETA thing. I'm not saying it was PETA. Uh, I don't know how much you got caught. He, he was, he, that, what drove me crazy about that is they wanted to show, like, the horror aspect of it. You know, horror, all this kind of stuff and suffering. You know, things that, you know, 40 years of trauma experience ugh, would, you know, he's right, he's right in his wheelhouse. You know, because the guy knows gore and violence and, you know, and death and all this kind of stuff. And there we go. And I'll put that down for, I'll put the controller down for that. And the, the. Yeah, it's not going to dodge that. The people that the, I'm sorry, just pop that up, pop little pop on the audio. The ADs and everything like that. And the writers were fighting with him on how to shoot this. And it's like, well, we want to shoot it this way, this way, this way. And he's like, you realize I've been doing this for 40 years, right? I know how to do horror. I know how. To, I know. I know. We really think it's better this way. And they went back and forth. Meanwhile, the rest of us are sitting there in this fucking cage, freezing our damn ass off. Out of out of spite, I went back to the house. When I finally got back, took a shower because I desperately needed to take one because it was just so unbelievably cold. And I'm about to get hit again. And so absolutely unbelievably cold. And you get the, you know get that chill going. On. And I'm like, screw it. I am eating a chicken sandwich right now. Fuck you, Peter. <laughs> Should have just eaten the chicken sandwich while you were in the cage. Uh, I did see some really nice boobs, though. Because some, <laughs> some women were, like, you know, all out for this thing. It's like, this is my starring role. Dude's like, you're fully naked. I know, it's okay. And it's like, all right, well, you know, single, I don't mind. You know. <laughs> I don't know. When it, whenever it's coming to me in movies and nudity, I just, I have totally block it out from my mind. Mm -hmm. it, it, my opinion is you're there to be a professional, and it's. Sure. You, you can't really, you can't really think about that. You can't. Well, the first, the ar arguably the biggest role that I've ever had. Um, whoops. Ah, dang. And I'm screwed. <laughs> and you're not quite dead yet. Now, now you are. And now I'm dead. Now read it. Um, I had a co-starring role in the HBO series The Deuce, the James Franco series. Mm -hmm. And it centered, around, there was a scene where, shall we say, I was engaging in adult-only activities or because my wife and I have a cat, we refer, refer to it as humans only time. Part cheesy? Uh, yes, yeah. So it, well, it was 1970s, so it was, uh, we were watching Love Boat. No, no, 19, uh, 1973. Love Boat. No, Love Boat was in a F Troop. How's that? We were, you know, F Trooping. <laughs> and um, suffice it to say, it was something. We oh, did, crap. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had the controller yeah. down. You didn't see any of my junk and everything like that. I was in my underwear, so it was okay. But it was something that when they aired it, they literally aired this the day after I got married. Mm -hmm. So there's this scene where I am literally boning this woman who did like 10 episodes of Orange is the New Black. And it aired the day after I got married. And one of my biggest fans that, ha that came from seeing this and seeing me boning this woman the day after I got married were my in-laws. They were so excited and so proud to see me fuck this other woman on TV <laughs> that opens up so many goddamn questions. You know, aye, aye, aye. but it's so awkward because Rob and I will talk about this because invariably somehow in some way, uh, gee, I got, you know what? Fuck. I forgot I can duck. All right. I think one more and then uh, that, that'll call. It that'll call it when we die in three seconds. Yeah. You know what? I got to say whatever that bubble guy is, he's very polite. He does not, you know, but uh, maybe I'll save, maybe I'll save the, uh, well, no, I, I would say finish it up here. Okay. <laughs> Um, when Robin had a one of her short, basically short film premiere in a Hoboken in the Hoboken Film Festival, and it's not a bad story, so I can say Hoboken in this case. Um, yeah. Why did I do that? I mean, I get a chance to finish this stupid story, but there was a, she was so proud of the short film that was in there. She was all excited about it, and she brought her parents up. It was a great moment. And before that is this gratuitous sex scene with oral sex and all this kind of stuff, and she's sitting there mortified watching this alongside her mother. And his mother's, mother's response is like, we've been around the block before. We've seen all this. We've done all this. Her father's <laughs> a musician. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yeah. Damn it. So, yeah, so long story short, she's sitting there watching oral sex scenes alongside her mother. It's my mother-in-law, so I didn't personally care. But it's mortifying as crap when you're, like, watching sex with your parents. Yes. I, and I think I told this story before, but I'll mention it real quick before we end this episode. Uh, my mother is a two things about my mother. She was a, a very protective mother growing up, but at the same time, she had a love of film, including mm -hmm. ones that were kind of dirty. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
when I was nine years old, she decided to introduce me to a movie called T- Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> or Kentucky Fried, Fried movie, movie. Yeah, which was the the uh, the beginning of the airplane series. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> she totally forgot everything was in it, including the fact that there was a shit ton of nudity. Yes, there is, <laughs> including like a porno uh, spoof in there, like high school Catholic girls in trouble. Now, see, I was and so, then she's and that pops up. She's like, "No, close your eyes." <laughs> I was so sheltered from that by my parents. I'll get into that probably in the next show, but yeah, no, I never got the opportunity to see a lot of that stuff. But I did have a sto- <laughs> I did have a story that I'll probably talk about next time. Go ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, this will be two oh, like three lines. Uh, uh, one other movie she ever did this to me on was uh, Pulp Fiction, which she brought me to see in theaters. <laughs> oh, jeez! And she was fine with most of the violence in it, and then got to the gimp, and she's like, "Oh God." Yeah. <laughs> well, the gimp actually it's really funny because the the cop was also the villain from the mask. Really? Yes. That was Oh, you mm, Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Zed, that was Zed. Yeah, Zed, yeah. Well, then yeah, that's a Zed's dead and his, Zed's dead, baby. And his career, I'm not sure what ever happened to it either. <laughs> so, anyway, see you next time. Bye-bye. So,